<laughs> hey guys, how's it going? I'm here with the one and only Ian Martin Allison. Hello, hello. We have been filming something all week. I was like, before you go back, we've got to film a quick lesson. We were just talking about what we should film it about. And because the Jazz Accelerator, if you don't know about the Jazz Accelerator, you can come and study jazz with myself for, it's a lot of weeks. I'll put a link down below. We open this course once a year for enrollment. It's open now. And I was like, Ian, let's make a, let's make a video about jazz. And I asked Ian, I was like, what is, what's been your biggest takeaway for jazz? And you said, well, it's this walking bass thing, right? Yes. So we are gonna try and teach you how to play a super like simple walking bass formula. Mm -hmm. Formula? <laughs> formula in under five minutes. So hit the countdown now. Okay, so here's the deal. I feel like there's so many ways you can walk a bass line. And when I first started, I was trying all these different approaches and I wish someone told me right away that you play chord tones on beats one, two, and three, and then you pass. So I try to think of this as root three, five, pass, or chord tone, chord tone, chord tone, pass. So let's actually put this into a progression. What this means is I'm gonna play three notes that belong to the chord, and then I am going to pass chromatically a half step away from the next target root note. So what's our progression today? The chord progression will be C, you can write this down if you want, right? C major seven to A dominant seven to D minor seven to G dominant seven. That's just like a one, six, two, five in the key of C for any of you fancy bonds out there, okay? So how do we create a walking bass line around that? Well, first of all, you need to familiarize yourself with this root motion. So get really used to playing a C, an A, a D, and a G. But don't just do it there. Maybe play a C, maybe an A up here. Maybe the D, maybe the G. There are a lot of ways to do it. How about the C? How about the A here? How about the D here? And the G here, right? Or you could start with the C here. Oh, A, right? Oh. D, G, right? Especially in this part of your instrument. Yeah. Familiarize yourself with that root motion. And then the chord qualities, let's build them. So if we're thinking about C major, well, we have a C major triad. Root, three, five, or root, three, five. Those are two really great ways to see this, right? And then if you play this, you get to pass to the next one. So my A is up here, right? So maybe I'm gonna play, right? And then your ear allows this note, which sounds so wrong, right? If you just <laughs> sit on it, but since you're moving to that A, it's so nice. So the first bar, I don't know, how about this? Root, three, five, pass to the A. Okay, yeah. now from this A, wow, we could play, now it's an A major, so we have A, the fifth, the third, the root. Well, we could play this. So mm. all, you've, all he's playing is root, three, five, chromatic. Or actually you played root, five, three, chromatic. But what you said might be better. Root, three, three five, five, chromatic. chromatic. Yes. Well, both work, right? So Absolutely. We just, we're essentially going chord tone, chord tone, chord tone, chromatic passing note, move into the next chord, right? Now that next chord, you know, when you first start doing this, just target the root note, right? Yes. So play chord tone, chord tone, chord tone, chromatic passing note, move into the next chord. And, and I mean like, what is a chromatic passing tone? For us in this formula, it is a note above or below the root that we move into. Yeah, from a half step, right? So if we're thinking about targeting D, chromatic approach to D would be either a D sharp or E flat or a C sharp or D flat. So in this thing, we're doing Right? That sounds great, man. So let's play that. I'll play the chords for you. You play the walking line. Here we go. One, two, three. And then it'll be moving to that G7, right? So what do you do on the G7 to get it back around to the C major? All I did since I was here is I played a D, and now this is a D minor, right? So D, it's flat third, the fifth, and then I just chromatically walked it down to the G. And then we get to that G7. And what are you going to play to get us to that C major? So many ways to do this. But one thing that I really like to do on a five chord is just actually play down root five octave. Yeah, because they're chord tones. You don't need to put the thirds in if you don't yeah. want to. Right, so how about eight, 
five, one. And now you can go here, or you could play. Oh, that was right? nice, that was nice. Yeah. Was so chromatic touch. pass from either above your target or below your target. Oh. Now, what you should do is go and get some simple chord sequences. Obviously, start out with this one first, the C, A7, D minor, G7. Go around that for a few times just to get you know comfortable with what it feels like under the fingers. And then I'd recommend taking a standard like Autumn Leaves and just doing the same formula with that. The chords are... If you use that same formula... If you dig this stuff, if you want to learn more about jazz, and I highly recommend that you do because it's such a great way to learn the instrument, learn about chords, learn the fretboard and everything in between. It's been a massive, had a massive impact on myself in terms of my playing. And I expect you're the same. Oh, here, for right? sure, for sure. Yeah, if you're into jazz, go check out the Jazz Accelerator program. It is open for enrollment right now and it's only open once per year, okay? So go check it out. The link is down in the description below and hopefully we will see you on the inside.